Okay, in this video, we are gonna find the line integral of a scalar function along a piecewise linear path. And so there's a couple things you need to know. Uh, first of all, hopefully this isn't the first line integral, integral that you've done before. So uh, it's the integral along C of F of X, Y, Z, and then DS. And then you know we do some substitutions, we calculate DS, and then we end up with an integral just in terms of usually T, sometimes theta, um, and we do the integral. So we turn something complicated into a calc one type integral, and that's pretty nice. The second thing you need to know is that um, if you have a piecewise linear path or any kind of piecewise path, you can actually just sum up the line integrals. So you do the line integral along each piece of the path, get a value, and then you add those up. Um, so we're allowed to sum them up, and we're gonna definitely take advantage of that. And the third thing you need to know in this case is how to parameterize a linear path so let's say from x0, y0, z0 to x1, y1, z1. So to do that, the way that I always do it is I'll say x is x0, so that's like your starting point, plus a delta x times t. And then delta x is just like when you're calculating slope in like algebra one, it's gonna be um, x1 minus x0. And then I do the same thing for y. So y is gonna be y0, your starting point, plus delta y times t. And then delta y is y1 minus y0. And z is the same thing. So where you start plus the change times t. Ooh, I forgot to cross my t there. Uh, go back and get that. And then uh, if you set them up this way, then t is always going to go from 0 to 1, which can feel a little strange when you're doing a piecewise linear path because you get a bunch of line integrals and all of them have the bounds from 0 to 1. But that's OK because you're treating them each separately. So it's not like you need to go zero to one on the first integral and then one to two on the next. Uh, you can go zero to one on all of them. So I think people overcomplicate it sometimes and try to actually do that. Uh, let's do an example. So we have f of x, y, z is x e to the z squared. And our piecewise linear path goes from zero, zero, one. So it starts at zero, zero, one. It goes to zero, two, zero. And then from zero, two, zero, it goes to one, one, one. So there's only two parts to this path, which is nice because that means we have to do two line integrals instead of more. Um, so we need to find our path. So for the first path, it's gonna be from that first point to the second point. So for x, you start at zero and you end at zero. So my starting point is zero, my delta x is zero, so it's actually zero plus zero t, but I'm just gonna write zero. For y, we start at zero, we end at two, so the starting point is zero, the delta y is two minus zero, so two, so it's gonna be zero plus two, and then t. And then for z, we start at one, and we end at zero, so initial point is one, our delta z is zero minus one, so negative one, so it's gonna be one minus t. And that's our first path, so we need the t bounds, but if you do it this way, the t bounds are always zero to one. And we could just do that line integral, but let's write the second path right now. So C2. And we're doing the same thing because it's still linear. So we start at zero, we end at one. So it's gonna be zero plus one times T. Um, for Y, we start at two, we end at one. So it's gonna be two minus, so it's one minus two is negative one. So it's gonna be two minus one times T. And then um, for z, you start at zero, you end at one, so it's gonna be zero plus one times t. And if we do it this way, we always go from zero to one. And now we can write our two line integrals that we're gonna add up. So we're gonna integrate along c1, and then we're gonna integrate along c2, and we're gonna add them up. All right, so it turns out that when we start calculating along C1, because of the function, uh, something really nice happens. So here, it's gonna be the integral from, so our T bounds are zero to one. And now what we need to do is we need to do our substitution. So first, we're gonna substitute for X. But for C1, X is actually zero. So our function just became zero. So the integral from zero to one of zero is actually just zero. So we could kind of like just know this is zero, but I'm gonna do the whole substitution anyway. So uh, we're gonna substitute in zero, so we get zero. And now it's gonna be e to the, so we need to figure out what z is and then square it. So z for curve one is one minus t. 
So it's going to be the quantity 1 minus t squared. Um, and now we need to calculate ds for this. So I'm just doing this for practice. I already know this part's going to be 0. Um, ds is the square root of, so the derivative of, so we're looking at c1, the derivative of the x-coordinate, which is 0, is 0. The derivative of the y-coordinate is 2, so we're going to square that. So here we get 4. The derivative of the z component is negative 1, square it, you get plus 1, and then dt. But I already know that this whole thing is going to be 0. Um, so let's move on to the next one. So we'll write another line integral. So this is going to be along c2. The t bounds there are 0 and 1. And we're going to do all of our substitutions. So first we have to substitute for x. And for the second curve, it's just t. So we'll get t. e to the, we have to substitute for z again. So in this case, z is t. So we'll get uh, t squared here. And then we need to calculate ds. So the number one thing people forget is to calculate ds. Don't be like that. Um, so the derivative, so it's a square root. And the derivative of the x component is 1. Square that, you get 1. The derivative of the y component is negative 1. Square that, you get 1. And the derivative of the z component is 1. So if you square that, you also get 1. So actually, we just get radical 3 there. And now everything's a function of t, so dt. We already said this first integral is definitely 0. So uh, it's 0 plus. For the second integral, I'm going to pull out the radical 3. And now I'm going to integrate this. So I have t e to the t squared that I need to integrate. Um, you could do u substitution. I look at it and I just think there should have been a 2, so I need a factor of 1 half, and then it's going to be e to the t squared, and then from 0 to 1. And then don't forget, when you plug in 0, it doesn't zero this out. A lot of people do that. So it's going to be radical 3 over 2. Uh, if I plug in 1, I get 1, I get e. And then if I plug in 0, I get 1, so it's e minus 1. And we're done. All right, so that's a line integral along a piecewise linear path. Uh, all you have to do is two separate line integrals and add them up. So I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.